voices in my mind that say I'm not enough Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know Welcome to Rockwood First Congregational Church. I'm Pastor Dave Paneski. I am so delighted that you're here uh, and joining me today for our worship service for our Lord. Uh, before we begin with our worship service, I do have some announcements uh, I'd like to share with you. Uh, first announcement is that we have Reader's Digest and Guideposts. We have a bunch of these uh, in our Narthex that are available for those that are looking for some good reads or short stories something that's inspirational that's uplifting that you can put in your day and so if you're interested in them uh, they are in our narthex uh, let me know give the church a call and we'd be happy to uh, let you take them they're free to take so uh, they are available uh, the second thing is that last week our diaconate meeting was postponed and it's been rescheduled to this Wednesday uh, the January 20th at 10 a.m. Uh, again, the next announcement I have is the toiletry co-op is open. It's open, it's available for those in need. I can't stress enough if you hear someone saying they know of somebody that's struggling, uh, don't have them hesitate whatsoever to give us a call. We're here to lift them up. We have plenty of uh, household cleaning products as well as uh, personal hygiene products. We have canned foods. Uh, we have we got some uh, some more stuff that uh, new stuff that came in recently here uh, as well as we have coats as well as warm sweaters so if you know somebody that maybe you know with the temperature changing and it's getting cooler 
Um, most definitely share that information. Tell them to call the church. Uh, other thing too, I think is we, I can't talk enough about is that uh, reaching out to others right now is so important, so critical. So many people have been isolated by themselves uh, or live by themselves uh, since March of this year and they just feel like the world's coming down on them and they absolutely as a congregation, we need to reach out to people. Um, we may we may need to reach out to people three times a day uh, just to make sure that we're encouraging people having a conversation with them and uh, it's so critical it's so critical today so again I can't stress enough to encourage you to do that uh, with that said let us ready our hearts let us ready our minds and our souls and for worship when we think about our Lord God knows all things. God knows us better than we know ourselves. And God calls us and God invites us on a journey of love. And we have accepted that. So please join me now as we sing out loud from the comforts of our home our opening hymn. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. now for our call to worship our invocation and Lord's Prayer our call to worship in the shadows of the night God calls us here I am 
for you called me. In the daylight, God calls us. Here I am, for you called me. God calls to each of us by name. Here I am, for you called me. Please join me for our invocation. Creating God, how deeply you know us. In the mystery of your love, you see who we are and who we might become. Our bodies are your creation. They are wonderfully made. Our minds reflect your handiwork. Our spirits are a gift from you. You call us by name and invite us to follow. Lead us now into the depths of your love. Amen. It was Jesus who taught us all how to pray. Together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, join me now as we sing together again with praises to our Lord, whose Holy Spirit transforms our lives, guides our lives, and makes calls on our lives. Let us sing with great joy our second hymn, We Are Called. We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another. To walk humbly with God. in the freedom of the city of God. We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another, to walk humbly with God.
my friends, it's time now that we ready our hearts, ready our minds and our souls as we pray to our Lord. Oh God, you are patient and wise. You have called our church into being to serve you by helping others. Enable us to serve with joy, to serve with confidence. We rejoice in the many ways in which we are able to help others around us is because of you and your help. Today we gather to worship you from many different places. It is your spirit that brings us together. We welcome one another in your name as we celebrate our fellowship as a church in our friendships. Oh Lord, remind us that you are with us always. What have we to fear? But we fear far too often of the unknown that lies ahead of us. We always want to be assured of happy outcomes of our prayers and efforts. Help us to trust your guidance and your presence. Help us to rem remember that there is no time when we are not in your care. Oh Lord, today we offer prayers for each other for those who are near and dear to us, for those who are on our prayer list, for situations of strife that are occurring in our country. Please hear our prayers. Keep us all safe. Heal our wounds. Bind up our bruises and broken spirits. Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit to be with all those who are viewing this service. Search the cries of our hearts for our prayers as we lift them up to you in silence. Almighty God, give us courage, give us strength. Help us reach out to others to teach them about your foundational truths. Be with us, walk with us as we lift up all these things in Jesus' name, amen. God is the creator of all of our blessings. Allow our hearts, allow our minds to hear God's call so that we will respond to God's voice, to where he leads us. May we bring more than just ourselves, our offerings, our times, and our talents to help with the maintenance needs of Christ church. Your offerings can either be mailed in, dropped off, or you can take on a special project. This is your commitment to Christ for the work of his church. So let us sing with great praise to our God, with joy in our heart, our doxology.
My friends, let us pray a prayer of dedication to our God. Oh God, you are the source of all goodness in life. We bring our offerings to you this day, knowing that all we have comes from you. We hear your call and we answer, bringing all that we have and all that we are. Use our gifts, our talents, and our time for the work of your church, for the work of peace, justice, love, and compassion. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph, Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. He then added, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. What would go through your mind if someone comes up to you and says these words? I want you to follow me. I want you to come with me. I'm sure this would stop you in your tracks. It would cause you to ask yourself a few questions in your mind's eye. Like, who are you? Who are you? I really don't know who you are. My friends, again another question, my friends say you're okay, but I'm not really sure if I want to follow you. It kind of reminds me of my visit to Costco the other night. Rebecca and I were in line uh, at the checkout. And all of a sudden, there's this guy. And he's coming towards us. He's got a mask on his face. And all of a sudden, he says, David, David. And I'm thinking to myself, do I know you? I'm looking at him intensely, I mean seriously intensely, trying to figure out who he is. And he says my name again, David. He looks down, he's looking down at his hand. And in his hand is a visa card. And he says, I think we found your visa, David. It has your picture on it. And I'm thinking to myself, how did he get a hold of my visa card? I never pulled it out of my wallet to get into the store, and I haven't even used it. Well, it turns out that it belonged to another Costco customer with the same, with a picture, kind of looked like me, but he said he had gray hair, he had glasses, his name was David, he was much taller than I was, and he was a lot bigger than I was. So if someone comes up to you and says 
these words, I want you to follow me. I want you to come with me. What kind of questions would be going through your mind? Where are we going? How much time is it going to take out of my day to go with you? Why would I want to go with you? What's in it for me? What does it mean? What does it mean if Jesus comes to you in your dreams and says, follow me? Or comes into your mind and says, follow me? In your meditations and your prayer and you hear the whisper, follow me? Follow me? What would your decision be? Today our scripture tells us about a time when Jesus decided to go to Galilee. While he was walking, while he's walking, he finds Philip and he says to him, follow me. Jesus simply just simply looks at someone, looks at a person and says to them, follow me. They stop whatever they are doing. It ends right then and there. And they immediately begin a journey with Jesus towards eternal life. There's no hesitation, no indecisiveness. There are no questions, just an immediate response. They begin to follow Jesus. You know this is going to be a life-changing event. Think about this. Your call from God and your faith in God is based on foundational truths. It means that you know, that you know about the accounts that are given in Genesis. That God created the heavens and the earth, the light in the darkness, the day and the night, the seas and the sky, the air and the animals. And lastly, God created humankind in his image, you and I. Philip's decision is to follow Jesus. It was based on foundational truths meaning he had complete faith in God. He had complete faith in God's authority. These are the decisions that can change a person's life from the inside out. It transforms you day after night, night after day. We know this, that Philip and Simon and Andrew, they all grew up or knew each other uh, from the same small village, Bethsaida. Our scripture tells us that Philip, Philip finds his friend Nathaniel and he tells him about Jesus. He says Jesus is the Messiah who has been prophesied about in the Old Testament by Moses and other prophets. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18 through 19, it says this, I will send them a prophet, an Israelite like you. I will put my words, my words in his mouth. He will tell them everything I command him. Whoever refuses to listen to the words, whoever refuses to listen to the words that prophet speaks in my name will answer to me. That's pretty clear when Jesus says, follow me. Nathaniel's response to Philip was, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Nathaniel's thinking that Nazareth is this small town and it has a, a pretty bad reputation. That people there somewhat are committed to their, are somewhat committed to their Jewish roots, but they don't spend a lot of time worshiping God. 
Well, if you know God, and I know you know God, then you know that if God's involved, it's going to be good. It's going to be divine. It's going to be awesome. And we all know that God can take any situation, any situation, and make good come from it. Especially when it helps people to learn about him, to find the lost, to help them discover the foundational truths about God. When it comes to saving lost souls, all things are possible with God, especially if you have faith, and I mean complete faith. Philip says to Nathaniel, come and see. You are simply going to be amazed and blessed. My friend, you must experience this for yourself. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Jesus saw Nathanael approaching him. And Jesus says to him this, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Jesus could look directly into his heart. He looked directly into his heart and he could see his integrity. He could see his honesty. He could see someone who does not deceive others. Nathaniel asked Jesus, how do you know me? Have we met before? And Jesus answered this, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Before Philip called you. Not after, but before. Jesus' knowledge of Nathaniel's day just wowed him. He's thinking to himself that his friend Philip must be right, that this is the Messiah right in front of him, the all-knowing God, the Son of God, the King of Israel. Before he saw Philip, he was meditating. He was meditating on God's Word. It was his devotional time. It was his time of prayer with God. Nathaniel replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the king of Israel. And Nathaniel's response confirms that he has tremendous conviction in his heart. Within moments of meeting Jesus, within moments, Nathaniel was convinced that Philip was right, that Jesus was the Son of God, the King of the Jews, the Messiah who would establish the throne of David forever. Only God, only God can look into a man's heart and know all things. Jesus answers Nathanael's question by saying this, you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree. Jesus tells Nathanael, that you will see greater things than these. Jesus is reminding us all that we will see far greater things as well. Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open, open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This account can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Jesus just revealed something that no one else in the world knew at the time, that heaven was Jesus' true home, that heaven was Jesus' true home, that the Son of Man came from heaven, as an account in Genesis, God is the creator of the heavens and the earth. 
God comes from heaven. The heavens were opened and they remain open for those who place their faith and trust in Jesus the Christ, our Savior. Jesus sacrificed himself for you and I. Jesus paid the price for all of our sins. Placing our trust in Jesus is what matters most in our life. Here are a few takeaways. What does it mean when someone comes up to you and says, follow me? And what does it mean when Jesus comes up to you and says, follow me? Follow me. How will you respond? Here's another thought. When a lost soul finds Jesus, we all know that their life will change forever. When Jesus walked up to Nathanael, all Jesus said to him was, follow me. No questions were asked. He simply dropped everything and he followed Jesus. Philip went on to witness on behalf of Christ. And he said to his friend, come and see, come and see. Is God calling you? Is God tugging on your heart, saying, follow me, follow me? Are you encouraging your friends and lost souls that you know to come and see? I recently saw a, a video, Billy Graham was talking about putting your trust in God. Billy was witnessing on behalf of God at this revival. And Billy said this to the people there, that he doesn't place his trust in Washington. That he doesn't place his trust in the United Nations either. He doesn't place trust in himself. And he doesn't place trust in his money. Billy tells the crowd that he only puts his trust in the Lord Jesus the Christ. When the rest of it fails, when it all fails, when it crumbles and it scatters and shatters, the Lord will be there. The Lord will be there. Are we putting our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ first and foremost? We know we cannot place our faith in our money. We cannot place our faith in our government leaders either. We certainly cannot place our faith in secularism. When Jesus says, follow me, we need to place 100% of our faith and trust in Jesus and follow. Let us draw closer to our Lord. When we hear our, the Lord's voice, when he's tugging on our hearts, saying, follow me, we need to sing this closing hymn with tremendous joy. Here I am, Lord. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. 
who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard. knows us better than we know ourselves and God calls us to follow we go in Jesus name to share the good news of God's love we go in peace knowing that God loves us we follow the call of love and we go with God's abundant blessings amen Oh God. 